Hi, this is Chris. In this video, you're going to get what I call the Garage Band Survival Kit. If you find yourself in a situation where you want to jam on the drums with a band, these are the essential tools you're going to need in your bag of tricks. Okay, so let's dive in. If you want to jam with a band uh, for a rehearsal, jam session, whatever, there's just a few things you're going to need. Okay, probably going to need uh, one or two beats, um, and then also a couple ideas for fills, just so you can spice it up and make it interesting. Okay? So, we'll dive in. The first beat, I'm going to show you, it's called the Money Beat. And that's because it has paid people millions of dollars, it's sold millions of records, it's been on thousands and thousands of recordings, it's all over the place, because it works. And you can count on it, and it's the first lesson I teach all my students, and again, you hear it all over the radio. You can bet that this will help you through 90% of all the situations you're going to find yourself in. So let's take a quick look and I'll show you what it's going to look like. All right, there it is, that's the money beat. Nice and easy, that can apply to rock or country, all, all kinds of stuff, okay? Um, whenever uh, we take a look at the money beat, there's also a few different variations. So let's go ahead and mix it up. I'll show you one of the variations real quick, okay? All we're doing is taking that beat three and adding eighth notes, making it three and on the bass drum. Very simple, sounds like this. Okay, you might ask yourself, why do I want the variation? It's because you don't want to play every song exactly the same. Not only do you want to be able to mix up the beat a little bit between songs, but also inside of each song. So if you get to the chorus, you want to make it sound different than the verse. So let me show you. I'll play uh, four beats of the original Money Beat uh, for a verse, and then just to spice it up, not only will we do the variation, but one other trick you can do is slide, that, uh, some, the, slide the right hand over to the cymbal and uh, make a chorus out of it, okay? It would sound like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now you got the basic idea. That's how you can spice up, play a couple of different songs, uh, play actually play a lot of different songs off a couple of different beats. Um, verse, chorus, that sort of thing. What's gonna go in between them? That's where you're gonna need a fill, okay? Fill is one bar or a few beats of something spicy to kind of change it up and set up the next section you're going to, okay? I'll play three beats of the money beat, or three bars of the money beat, and I'll give you a little fill and then I'll go in to a chorus. So basically what we just did, but I'm going to throw a fill in there so you can see what that looks like. Here we go. Alright, there you go. That's a fill. Very basic concept. That's very easy, very standard, um, and I can help break all that stuff down for you uh, in all kinds of lessons. There's tons of variations on that as well. Okay, the last part I want to show you here real quick is what we call warm-ups, and they're exactly what they sound like. They help warm your hands and your arms up. A lot of problems that uh, a lot of the drummers find the first time they try and actually sit down and do a whole rehearsal or do a whole concert um, they're used to just playing one or two songs at a time and then going and getting a coke or a sandwich or whatever. If you're doing a rehearsal, you got to try and get through it, so you're going to find yourself playing for longer periods of time. What will happen is your muscles get tight, all the blood goes there and everything seizes up and you're trying to get through your fifth song in a row and your hands are just going to feel dead. So one way you can bat that is to do these warm-ups. This first one, very simple, it's called eights. And all it is is straight eighth notes on each hand. You start them off slow and then you go faster. So let me just show you real quick what it will look like. One, two, three, four.
Okay, real simple. The whole trick with that is you want to start off slow, bring that drumstick all the way back, 90 degree angle, and then come back down. Don't use your fingers, just from the wrist down. That way it's really starting to stretch out all the muscles. It's getting all the blood flowing into the forearms. It's going to help you out later on so you don't freeze up. Okay, again, nice and slow, but you want to slowly, gradually increase the speed. You want to try and get it faster and faster. And as it gets faster, use less of your wrist and you'll use a little bit more of the fingers and your height will come down because there's just simply not enough time in between each stroke to come all the way back that 90 degrees, okay? So at a faster tempo, this is what it would look like. Okay, so you can see, again, my heights went down a little bit. Um, use the fingers a little bit because as you get faster and faster, you're going to start to use those fingers. All right. Next fill or next warm up I'll show you real quick is the exact same thing, but you accent uh, every other note. So this is called bucks because it's up and down, up and down, just like a bucking horse or bucking bronco. All right, so here we go. Eighth notes uh, in the warm up of bucks. One, two, three, four. Okay, the whole concept behind One Loud, One Soft is stick control. You're learning how to control the sticks. Same thing, you start slow and you want to increase the speed. As you go faster and faster, it pays huge dividends. You learn how to control the stick on all your fills, whenever you start doing rolls, anything where it's real intricate. Some of the coolest fills aren't necessarily what you're playing, but how you play it. If you play it with loud accents and then almost non-existent little grace notes, that's what adds the feel to it, makes it sound really, really cool. So again, eight notes, do that, that eighth warm up into bucks. Start slow, increase the speed, and it'll help your endurance whenever you're playing your game. Okay, well that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video lesson because I really enjoyed making it for you. And obviously, there's more to this lesson than I can put in this short little video. If you'd like the next lesson in the series, go ahead and sign up for my free drumming tips newsletter. It's free, it covers this, also dives in a little more in depth into ideas for fills, different variations for the money beat, um, but also you get tips like drums and drum equipment, uh, how to practice, and just all sorts of stuff. So go ahead and sign up today, and I look forward to working with you soon.